Do you want to know how to help a child overcome jealousy? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting and good communication and how to build strong family relationships and solve problems. A jealous child is experiencing a problem. We're going to talk about how to help them solve it. <laughs> talk about instances when children have a tendency to get jealous and what to do to help them in those situations. So jealousy can occur at any time and honestly at any age. Adults can experience jealousy too. Envy is just one of the flaws of being a human. But I didn't know that my little two-year-old had jealousy issues until we brought a new baby home from the hospital. When we brought home his little sister, he looked at the baby and thought it was cool for a second and then just looked at me and said, put the baby in her bed, put the baby in her bed. Because he didn't like the baby was taking up mom's arms. The baby was taking up mom's time. And so when it was nap time, oh, he loved it. He was playing with me and we were doing all kinds of things. And as soon as the baby would cry, he would get tense, he would get nervous. He didn't want to have to share me with baby. Well, this was a really hard no answer for my oldest son, Quinn, but ultimately he ended up learning how to share attention with his sister Paige. In fact, they ended up becoming the best of friends and they were best friends all through their growing up. So in the it wasn't so bad but at first he definitely was jealous any time I spent time with her so that's one instance where a person could experience jealousy but children often has jealousy when somebody is given a toy or gets to do a special experience and they don't get to do it too maybe brother or sister gets invited to a birthday party where they get to go to a special outing like maybe they get to go to the zoo or something and the other child doesn't get to go to the zoo and they want to this can be very difficult for children sometimes older children will see the way a parent teaches a younger child or what they do to help raise a younger child and they'll say that's not fair i would have never been able to get away with that when i was that age so I always told my children, you know what? God knew exactly what order you were supposed to be born in. He knew that the ones that were born first would have different experiences than the ones that were born last. And so we just have to accept that God knew what was best and mom and dad are trying to know what's best with each child as it comes along. Now, when I told them that, basically I was giving them a no answer saying, I know you have an opinion on this, but in the end, I have to make the decision and we have to just trust that there is a reason for it all. So accept that no answer. Accepting a no answer is actually a really important part of being able to handle a problem with jealousy. So we're going to talk about ways that we can handle jealousy, but first it's important to talk about what not to do. So one thing you definitely don't want to do is make everything fair. That's one of the worst things that you could do because then the child doesn't get the opportunity to learn how to accept a no answer and conquer that jealousy. I remember meeting with a woman years ago and she said, my children are so mean to each other and everyone's so grumpy all the time and they're fighting all the time and I don't know why they're doing this because I always make sure everything's fair. If one child gets one thing, I always make sure every child gets the same thing. And I thought, whoa, that's intense. I'm thinking, how many toys must they have in their house? You know, or something. I thought that's crazy. But I, I said to her, do you think maybe that that could be actually one of the reasons that they are being so selfish and mean to each other? Because they feel like they deserve whatever anybody else has. And if it's a teeny tiny little thing, they can't handle it. If they don't get it, it could be that you produced entitlement in your children and even made it so that they would become more jealous of the little tiny things that somebody couldn't duplicate exactly for them. And she looked at me with this look on her face like, oh, I did not think of that at all. And she said, do you think that I can maybe fix that at this point. And I said, well, I think you better try, you know, yeah, probably, but you need to tell them you're really sorry for making everything fair. And now they get an opportunity to learn some skills for how to accept some of those no answers in life when life isn't fair. 
So we're gonna talk about what to do to help them with their jealousy and how to learn to accept a no answer in all circumstances. But before we do, click that subscribe button now. This channel's for you and all the videos that come out here are for you too. And if you don't click that subscribe button, you won't know when they come out. There's two key things that you want to teach your children. One of them I've been talking about already, and that's accepting a no answer. So when you accept a no answer, you can do four things. You look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, and then drop the subject. So this means that you decide you're calm, you're okay, you can say okay, or you can discuss it with someone, and then you cannot think about it anymore. It can be gone. You don't have to worry about it. It doesn't have to take you over super liberating thing to be able to drop the subject. There's a lot of adults that don't know how to drop the subject, I will say. And sometimes I have to remind myself, oh, this is a drop the subject thing. So anyway, this is huge. When it comes to jealousy, you're never going to be able to make everything equal for everyone. In fact, that's just not a realistic view of life ever. My father used to always say, fair is a myth. If life were fair, we'd all be rich. I'm like, oh yeah, it's true, dad. And if life were fair too, we could all be poor. He's like, right. There's no such thing as fair. There's what it is. And then you have to deal with what it is. And if you want more work more, you know, toward it. And if not, then deal with what you've got. And that's how you are. So jealousy really is this lazy viewpoint that you should be entitled to something else. And we don't want our children to experience that. So they need to learn how to drop the subject about it or keep working and moving themselves forward. Now, another thing that you can do to make it so that your children do not develop the bad habit of having jealousy regularly is teach them how to sacrifice for each other. Sacrifice is a principle that really does build a strong strong, mature person. So children should learn how to sacrifice for each other when they are very young. In fact, my two-year-old son had to learn how to sacrifice for the daughter that was a baby right? He had to learn that. He didn't want it. He kept trying to say, this isn't what I want. Put the baby in her bed. But in the end, he had to wait his turn. Waiting your turn, experiencing delayed gratification, serving and giving some of what you have to other people. These are all things that help a person decide that they don't want to experience jealousy. In fact, they can be happy for other people. Praising other people or around you is another way that you can help your children see that everyone is trying their best and that everyone is not going to have everything the same every time. Because maybe they won't get praised one time when their brother got praised another time. Well, then they just have to accept that. They don't get everything that everybody else gets. Now, you don't have to be harsh with these lessons of sacrifice. You can teach sacrifice very lovingly. My very favorite example of teaching sacrifice is actually from The Little House on the Prairie book by Laura Ingalls Wilder. So in that book, Laura and Mary are with their dad down in the river bottom somewhere and they find all these little beads that were left over from a Native American tribe that was in the area. They went around the camp and collected all these little beads. So they had a handful of beads. They came home. They were so excited to show them to their mommy. They showed their mommy the beads and she looked at the beads and said, oh, those are so beautiful. That will make such a great necklace for your sister, Carrie. Carrie wasn't even there. Carrie didn't collect any of the beads. But mom was suggesting that Mary and Lara take the beads and give them to a third person who wasn't even there to Carrie as a gift when they had spent the entire day collecting them. And Lara talks about how that was kind of hard, but like in the end, she was so happy that she could have done all that work to make her little baby sister Carrie so happy. That was sacrifice. She had a heart change because of it, because suddenly it wasn't about her. The whole day she was thinking of what she was gonna do with the beads. And then she got the opportunity to give them and she didn't resist. And then she felt good about it afterward because it was such a hard thing to do. Children that get the opportunity to sacrifice for other people can experience changes of heart. In our very affluent society, it is really hard to find legitimate opportunities to teach children to sacrifice. When me and my family went to Kenya and we went to some of the, the neighborhoods there that were in the slums in Kenya, and they were able to you know, see that they had things just with them, like granola bars and stuff that they could just give to people that would bring people such happiness. 
they realized they needed to be grateful for everything and that it was a good thing to be someone who was giving something up and not having instead of thinking of themselves as someone who had to have just as good as everybody else, which is what the jealous person thinks. If you've enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you'll love my next video, which is called Showing Sympathy Without Creating Emotional Entitlement. So click on the link to that video now so that you can understand how to be sympathetic with your children, but not lead them down that entitlement road, which ultimately leads to jealousy.